Hello scene peepers. Welcome back to our channel. Today, I would like to explain about a Korean family comedy drama film, called Miracle in Cell No. 7. The film is based on the true story of a guy who was tortured and pled guilty to the rape and murder of a 9-year-old girl in Chuncheon on September 27, 1972, before being exonerated later in November 2008. Spoilers ahead, take care, and enjoy. The story is centered on Yi Sung, a female lawyer who wants to reopen her late father's criminal case. She believes that her late father was sentenced for a crime that he didn't commit. Back in 1997, the movie shows a scene in which the six-year-old Yi Sung and her mentally disabled father, Yong Gu, gaze into a store window, singing while admiring a Sailor Moon rucksack. Yong Gu pledges to Yi Sung that he will buy her the rucksack for her first day of school tomorrow right after he gets paid. However, the police commissioner and his daughter purchased it before Yong Gu. Yong Gu gets slapped and hit by the police commissioner and thrown out of the store as he rushes in to get the rucksack. After that, Yong Gu and Yi Sung return home without the bag. The two only have each other, and the father-daughter relationship is unbreakable. Yi Sung, despite her youth, does her best to look after her father. They have a specific goodbye routine in which Yi Sung counts to three and Yong Gu turns around for them both to make their most ridiculous faces. The next day, after getting his paycheck for working in a parking lot, Yong Gu wants to buy the rucksack for Yi Sung. The commissioner's daughter sees Yong Gu in his workplace and tries to show him the other store where he can purchase a similar Sailor Moon backpack. That day, the roads were super slippery. Somehow the little girl slips and dies. While trying to save the little girl and perform CPR, his futile attempt was misinterpreted by a female bystander. When the incident happened, Yi Sung was waiting for his father to come home. Yongu was later arrested by the police in a rape and murder case. The police even tricked him to reenact the crime, forcing him to take off his pants even though he didn't do it when the incident happened. Yi Sung saw his father during crime scene reconstruction but she could not reach him. After that, Yongu was sent to jail and potentially sentenced to death. In the prison, he shares a jail cell number 7 with 5 other inmates. They all despise him at first because of his unjustly charged crime and his mental disability. They even beat him together and feel angry because of his immoral crime of raping a little girl. Meanwhile, after her father was sent to prison, Yi Sung who is now alone was sent to an orphanage. She left a note in her orphanage's telephone number on their house door hoping her father will get back home and take her out of that place. In the prison, one of Yang Gu's cellmates, Yang Ho, is doing a business where he can smuggle several things from outside for the prisoners who pay him money. The business runs so well, making another gang leader in the prison envy and want to injure him. The other gang leader wants to stab Yang Ho. However, Yang Gu sacrifices himself to save his cellmate and gets stabbed in Yang Ho's place. Yang Ho later fights his rival and easily overpowers him. Yang Ho is moved by this and offers to assist Yang Gu in any way he can in return. Yang Gu expresses his only desire to see his daughter, Yi Song. After the incident, all the prisoners in cell number 7 are now more friendly to Yang Gu. When her choir visits the prison for a performance on a religious day, the inmates successfully smuggle Yi Sung into their cell by putting her into a box. The father and daughter reunite in the cell and express how they miss each other so much. However, one of the inmates, Bong Sheik, wants to report this to the warden. Bong Sheik later changes his mind after Yi Sung holds his hand, begging him not to report her to the warden. They actually want to let Yi Sung stay in the cell for two hours. However, the priest fainted forcing the religious ceremony to finish faster than they thought. They have been trying hard to return Yi Sung to her choir team but they were late. They have no choice other than to let Yi Sung stay with them for several nights until the next religious event. There were several times when Yi Sung almost got caught by the prison officers. She has been enjoying the inmates' companions while staying in her father's cell. Several days later, the inmates heard there will be another religious event and they plan to smuggle Yi Sung back. It turns out that it was a Buddhist religion day and the performances were all monks. Yi Sung cannot go back because she is from the church, so they have no choice except to get her back to the cell. While choosing some photos from the church festival, the warden found out that one of the child performers was missing. He checked cell number 7. Although cell number 7 members had been trying hard to hide Yi Sung, they still got caught. After the incident, Yang Gu is sent to another cell alone and Yi Sung goes back to the orphanage. One day, there was arson in the prison. The warden got trapped and almost died. However, Yang Gu saved him. The warden eventually realizes that Yang Gu is not a bad guy. He assumes that Yang Gu is probably innocent and not the girl's assailant. One day, after seeing the father and daughter bond when Yi Sung visits his father in the jail with her school teacher, the warden pities him. 
The warden also tries to check Yang Gu's file case. It turns out that the police department was forced to finish the case as soon as possible because the victim is a commissioner's daughter. Even the statement written by Yang Gu looks compromised. The warden later allows Yi Sung to visit Yang Gu every day after school. Yi Sung's presence cheers up the atmosphere in cell number 7. She eventually develops a strong bond with all his father's cellmates. She teaches Yang Ho how to read and write, and even brings a handphone to the cell so his father's inmates can call their family. Finally, the date of Yang Gu's last trial has already been set up. Before the trial begins, Yang Gu tells his inmates how the accident happened. They recreate the scene together. All his cellmates learn that the girl slipped over on the market's icy pavement. The brick later dropped and hit her head, killing her. The temperature was extremely low when the accident happened, so all the roads were slippery. Yang Gu also explained to his inmates that he took off the girl's pants because it's one of the CPR steps. The movie later shows the scene when the adult Yi Sung holds a trial to clear her late father's name. It is also shown that his father's inmates and the warden are present in the court as witnesses to support this case to be reinvestigated. The warden also tried to reopen the case several years ago when he found out that Yang Gu was probably not guilty. Before the trial, the inmates of Room 7 teach Yang Gu how to answer prospective prosecution inquiries, and he becomes competent at doing so. He can explain how the incident happened clearly. He even now can tell that the police pleaded him guilty without investigating his case. However, before the trial, the commissioner beats Yang Gu in a fit of wrath and sadness, threatening to murder his daughter if he does not confess. His public lawyer also said that Yang Gu has to die to protect his daughter. He cannot answer any single question in the trial and gets cornered by the questions. Yang Gu then has no other choice than to confess the crime he did not commit because of the pressure. His public lawyer did nothing to defend him. They are all afraid of the commissioner. It turns out there were lots of misconducts in the investigation. The police and judge ignore all of Yang Gu's statements. They insisted that the little girl died because of the break and because Yang Gu choked her even though the autopsy report does not show those mentioned indications. All the investigators also ignore the fact that most of Yang Gu's statements were released when he got a psychological threat from the police. They used his love for his daughter and his mental disability to trap him in the injustice charge, leaving him no choice but to sacrifice himself by lying that he killed the commissioner's daughter. Prior to his acknowledgement of the crime, Yang Gu is sentenced to death. Later, the warden adopted Yi Sung and the girl stayed with him and his family. Yi Sung sometimes comes to the prison to visit his father. She also wrote a letter to Yang Gu and showed him how she does well in school. Meanwhile, in the prison, Yang Gu gets along well with his other cellmates and enjoys his last days with their companion. Yang Gu's execution date is scheduled for 23rd December, which happens to fall on Yi Sung's birthday. Because the inmates pity Yang Gu, they decide to create a hot air balloon for him to escape. The previous days before Yang Gu's execution date, the prison held a Christmas concert where Yi Sung came to perform as a part of the choir. She gets to hold her father's hand for the last time while performing the angel dances. On that day, the daughter and father ride the balloon together and plan to escape from the prison. They enjoy the view of the sunset from the air balloon. However, the balloon's rope was caught by barbed wire and their escape plan failed. On the day of Yang Gu's execution, the cellmates and Yang Gu celebrate Ye Sung's birthday in cell number 7 before he is executed. She got various presents from her father's friends. On that day, Yang Gu was finally able to give Yi Sung the Sailor Moon backpack she wanted. They both thank each other for being family. Before going to be executed, his cellmates leave lots of love notes on Yang Gu's back, saying how much they love them. Yang Gu was also able to hold Yi Sung's hand until the end and they hugged each other before he entered the execution room. When Yang Gu leaves, Yi Sung counts to three, waiting for her father to do the goodbye routine like usual. However, this time, Yang Gu does not turn around. This makes her break into tears and calls out his father's name. Yuan Gu comes back and hugs her for the last time, showing his will to turn back time and stay alive for his daughter. However, it was all too late. The judges had made their decision. Ye Sung, the prison warden, and the room 7 inmates all appear in court a few years later, in the present, to testify in Yuan Gu's defense. The judge overturns the prior verdict and grants him a posthumous acquittal, as well as a court order to reinvestigate the girl's case. The court decided that Yang Gu was innocent and there was not enough proof. The scene then shifts back to the beginning of the film, as Yi Sung sees a vision of Yang Gu and her younger self waving goodbye from a hot air balloon. As the balloon goes away, she says a heartfelt goodbye to her father. Miracle Cell No. 7 is a very touching film. You probably want to prepare some boxes of tissues while watching it.
It pictures the bond between father and daughter in an amicable way. The movie shows us how unfair this world could be for gifted people like Yang Gu. It also shows us that despite the crime one's ever done, they probably deserve a second chance in their life. There are some comedy scenes in the movies too that can make us laugh, but most of the scenes can definitely melt your heart. What do you think about the movie, peepers? Leave your comments below. Subscribe to this channel for more movie recaps. Please like and turn on notifications to support this channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.